Good evening and Merry Christmas. Wherever you are on this Christmas Eve, we are so glad that you have joined us for this Christmas worship celebration. Our service tonight features many of the children and youth of Christ the Servant, and we are grateful that while we can't actually gather in person, as we usually would, we can still see the faces of our congregation's kids and hear the voices of so many leading us in carols. Normally, near the end of this service, we would distribute handheld candles, we'd dim the lights, and pass that candlelight, watching it grow from one person to another. Although, like so many things this year, we can't do that, we do invite you to have a candle near you that you can light at that point in the service. So again, we are so glad to have you with us worshiping on Christmas Eve. And we are so grateful for the technology and for those with the technological know-how that make our worship together possible on this night. Merry Christmas, and let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a little special music. God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The story is Mary, Joseph, and the baby from the gospel book. 
In those days, Caesar Augustus published the decree ordering a census of the whole known world. This first census took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All the people were instructed to go back to their towns of their birth to register. And so Joseph went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city. He went to register with Mary, his spouse's wife, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her delivery. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She put him in a simple cloth wrapped like a receiving blanket and laid him in the feeding trough for cattle because there was no room for them in the day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The story of the angels. There were shepherds in the area living in the fields and keeping night watch by turns over their flock. The angel of God appeared to them and the glory of God shone around them. They were very much afraid. The angel said to them, You have nothing to fear. I come to proclaim good news to you. News of a great joy to be, to be shared by the whole people. Today in David's city, a Savior, the Messiah, has been born to you. Let this be a sign to you. You will find an infant wrapped in a simple cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in high heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom God's favor rests. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The story of the shepherds. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see the event that God has made known to us. They hurried and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Once they saw this, they reported what they had been told concerning the child. All who heard about it were astonished at the report given by the shepherds. Mary treasured all these things and reflected on them in her heart. The shepherds went away glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as they had been told, word, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. and shepherds and with the animals in the stable we gather around our son born for us bless us and fill us with joy and wonder as we look upon the manger scene may jesus born in our lives that we might share his love with all the world for he is our light and our salvation blessed be god forever amen Nothing is normal or the way it should be or the way we've always done it this year. Pandemic Christmas, Christmas in 2020 is strange and not as we ever expected Christmas to be. I never dreamed of not gathering as a congregation in person for Christmas Eve, but this is what is safe. In fact, 
It is what is decreed by the governor and the Maryland Department of Health. This is what we must do to protect one another, to avoid spreading this virus any further than it has already spread. Many this Christmas are at home and are, sick. and are sick. Many are hospitalized and can't even have family visit. Many traditional family visits, even for those who are not sick, won't happen this year. Yet we are gathered virtually. It is certainly different. It doesn't feel quite right. But I realized that when you think about Mary and Joseph and even the shepherds on that first Christmas night, nothing went as they had planned or expected it to either. I am sure that once Mary and Joseph managed to wrap their minds around the whole concept of pregnancy by the Holy Spirit and bearing the Son of God, then they had some help with angelic visions and instructions. But once they got that, they probably began preparing their homes and their lives for the addition of a baby. Maybe Mary began setting aside swaddling cloths and making baby clothes. Joseph, as a carpenter, probably began working on building a cradle. But then all of their plans and preparations were interrupted because an emperor 1,500 miles away in Rome called for a census that required Mary and Joseph to travel to Bethlehem, the little town of Joseph's ancestors. And Caesar Augustus did not do this to encourage family reunions or anything fun like that. He did it so that he could be sure that he was wringing as many taxes out of every citizen as he could. And so, somewhere in about month eight and a half of pregnancy, Mary and Joseph had to travel 90 miles, 90 miles, right before she was due to give birth for tax purposes. 90 miles on foot, or maybe a donkey, to a tiny, out-of-the-way, nowhere town where they no longer even had relatives with whom they could stay. And once they got there, I imagine it was downright terrifying to be experiencing labor pains without even having a place in which to spend the night. And of course, when they did find shelter, it was a stable not a clean room or even a bed, but a smelly, not even remotely sanitary, straw and animal filled stable. And instead of having cousins or about to be grandparents or sisters to help with the delivery, Mary was alone with her husband. There was no family to wait anxiously and then celebrate the birth of this healthy child. For all intents and purposes, these new parents were entirely alone, at least until a ragtag band of shepherds and probably their sheep showed up at the door. It cannot have been what they expected. It was not the way that they had imagined it or planned for it. And yet, it was into these humble and unexpected, seemingly inadequate and unplanned circumstances that the Word became flesh, that Jesus became incarnate, took on our humanity and showed up as God Emmanuel, God with us. And if Jesus could show up there, Jesus can show up here with us, even when we have to take our worship online, even when we can't worship and celebrate with the traditions and the practices that we usually do. 
Although we love and we miss all of the trappings and decorations and gatherings and beautiful music, candles and worship, you know, the way we've always done it before. None of that was present when Jesus showed up the first time. None of that was in place and expected when Jesus was arrested or crucified either, nor when the women went to the tomb and found it empty. Our Savior comes not when expected, not when we are ready, but into the unexpected, the unprecedented, the humble and the troubled. Jesus came into the midst of uneasy times, not with pageantry or majesty, but quietly and humbly. Jesus came into challenging times and places, into a tiny town with a displaced couple and the animals of an inn's stable. Perhaps this unusual COVID Christmas in 2020 will help us to remember and to experience in a new way that Jesus comes to us, that God is with us even in this time. When we are lonely, anxious, and afraid, when nothing is as we expected or planned, just as Jesus came to the strange, unplanned, and anxious couple in a stable in Bethlehem, Jesus comes when love is needed, and he comes to bring love in very unexpected ways. God's love finds its way to us, to our hearts and to our lives, and it doesn't happen because we plan it perfectly or because everything is exactly as it should be. Jesus comes to us because, because God so loved the world that he gave his only son, not because humankind or even his own parents were ready for it, but because of love and for the sake of healing and hope, reconciliation and salvation. And so even when our celebration is weird and done through video and computers and Zoom, even when it doesn't sound the way we think it should, even when we can't gather as we want, we do sing, we will rejoice and we give thanks. For a savior is born for us. A child has been given for us. God's light and life have come and continue to come into the world's darkness, shadows, and anxieties, bringing hope and joy and salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen.
with us. You came as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then, through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross to those entombed by death, the way of your self-serving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In a normal year, this is when, uh, if we were gathered in church, we would pass the light by lighting handheld candles and dimming the lights in the sanctuary. We have a video version of that passing of the light to share with you, but you are also invited now to light a candle and dim the lights in your home as we read of God's light coming into the world in the birth of Jesus and sing of that silent night. In the beginning there was a word, the word was in God's presence. The Word was God. The Word was present to God from the beginning. Though the world, through the world, all things came into being, and apart from the Word, nothing came into being that has come into being. In the Word was light, and that light was humanity light. A light that shines in the darkness, a light that the darkness has never overtaken. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round you virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, 
sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly peace silent night holy Shepherds quake at the sight. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing alleluia. Christ, the Savior, is born. Christ, the Savior, is born. Silent night, holy Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from your holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at your birth, Jesus, Lord, at your birth. May Christ who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this Christmas and always. Almighty God, Creator, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thanks be, be to God. God.